see we are going to discuss about the nuclear medicine of the radiology of the single photon and the positron emission tomography means spt and ept then uh, positron emission tomography and single photon uh, tomography that is called also known as the spect and the pet <coughs> so coming on the planar skin tomography producing the two images of the three dimensional object our body is a uh, three dimensional object if we want to uh, diagnose and classify the three dimensional object it is handicapped in the superposition of the active and non active layers which restrict the accurate measurement of the organ functions what is does uh, there is the surroundings uh, circular machine in which the there is the gap where we have to uh, go with the tray of the patient so this is the active and non active there is the two layers that is form one is active layer and another is the non active layer that accurate measurement of the that is able to restrict and accurate measurement of the organ functions so after that what it happens it happens in that emission computed tomography emission computed tomography means uh, it uh, releases the positron or photon that is called the emission computed tomography is based on the production of the multi cross sectional images there are the different cross sectional images that are found from the wide angle of view to see the tissue functions to see the tissue functions in the images so uh, actually the emission computed tomography is useful to take the images in to the 2 degree images and it makes look like the 3 degree images but in the plane skin tomography the main difference is it takes the images from the th 3 degree objects or the 3d objects and it will convert it in the image in the form of the 2d plane so this is the difference between them now the two ect techniques that are currently available the emission computed tomography the two types of the techniques that are involved that is single photon emission tomography that is also known as the spect and the positron emission tomography that is called the pet spectra uh, single photon emission tomography spect and pet both are uh, a part of the emission computed tomography however spect is involved in the imaging of the single seven ray activity single seven ray activity where we are using the radioactive compound 99 technium uh, in the microlates form so we are using the radioactive compound for the refraction and to also showing it showing the uh, attachment to the cells and it led to the appearance in the image while positron emission tomography it involve in the imaging of annihilation radiation originated from the positron decay actually we are using the uh, fluoride it team fluoride isotope and 1990 se isotope in the spect while it team f means fluoride uh, isotope here in the positron so in the imaging we are taking the radiation of the 511 kilo electron volt and in that annihilation radiation we are taking the originated positron decay and that is led to the typically addition of the typically from the 18f right now image planes are derived by the using two different techniques how you are going to determine the image planes the one image plane is the longitudinal ect and the another image plane is the transaxial ect so this one the first part the first one is showing the longitudinal ect longitudinal ect that is showing the first part and the second is the transaxial ect so longitudinal ect is useful for the limited angular range not for the wide angular range longitudinal ect is used for the limited angular range from the several body sections like as the frontal section and uh, also the transaxial section the reconstructed image planes are positioned parallel in the tooth detector plane so this is the tooth detector plane so if you want to uh, it just like the pipe you consider it just like as pipe so if you want to take the longitudinal section so you are going to 
but from the longitudinal ECT. Longitudinal ECT part of the of the SPECT or longitudinal ECT part of the PET positron imaging tomography. But in the transaxial, but is the advantage of the transaxial ECT in that we have the detector that is moving in the 360 degree like as in the MRI case and take the photons from the multiple body sections. The reconstructed images are perpendicular to the detector plane. There is the detector plane and the reconstructed images are forming perpendicular to that because they are taking the wide angle of view or the complete angle of view because 360 degree. So it takes, uh, it are move, uh, this detector plane is moving in the circle while the body is moving, uh, placed in the longitudinal section. So there is the complete 90 degree or the perpendicular detector plane the det angle of the detector plane to the longitudinal axis of the body is 90 degree so this is the difference in the transaxial and longitudinal ECT now coming on the longitudinal ECT so this is the di diagram of the longitudinal uh, ECT that allows the radioactivity to form the different angles within the limited angle range to obtain the information from the depth of the radiation source. So what it does, it have the, the radiation source, radiation source, you can see that rectilinear motion light image is coming. So this is the scintillator light producing, radiation uh, is producing here and there is the focused calling gate motor, focused calling motor, it led to the convergence of this radioactive lights, radioactive rays. So this convergence, the focused collimotor is giving the rays into the focal plane, giving the rays into the focal plane and from the focal plane the rays get reflected and then the image is formed in the opposite side. So th this is the depth of the radiation source. This is done by the rectilinear scanner. Rectilinear means straight line. St rectilinear means straight motion. Straight motion of the light giving the uh, image that is formed that coupled with the highly focused collie motor and focused collie motor is focused the radiations in the focused plane and give the create sharp image only from the particular plane at the depth defined by the angle range so there is the focal plane where the focal point is present and from the focal point the radiations get again transmitted and these transmitted rays are uh, waste because they are not uh, involved in the image so what uh, the radiation source we are giving this radiation source is not same to make the image because there are the property of the light that some of the light get reflected some get refracted some get transmitted also then after what happens coming on the transaxial coming on the transaxial you can see this is the gamma gamma radiations and this is the camera gamma camera uh, but it does in the gamma camera gamma camera producing the light focused collimotor the multi-plane cotomographic scanner represents an improved version which replaces the single detector by the gamma camera it also allows to adjust the electronic repositioning the focal distance and can therefore select different image planes it can check the different image planes why because it have the gamma camera in which the focused collie motor is not in the same angle focused collie motor is not present in the same angle as in the previous case the focused collie motor is present in the same way as the light is coming at the focused point so there are the multiple focal points here you can see the multiple focal points are here p1 p2 p3 so you can change the gamma camera source and you can change also the focal planes maybe this p3 can get converged at the p2 point so it gives the wide angle of view and wide angle of images form in that case so gamma camera image of the source is as a function of the position along with the scanning direction right you can see here the 12 image of the skeleton in the record in the longitudinal multiple tomography technique so you are able to see the, there are the 12 images here you are not able to diagnose anything because there is the blood images and the whole radiation is con get constant but here in the fourth or the fifth 
means fourth or fifth image you are going to check completely this image and clearly contrast between the other images <coughs> and also these all 12 images are taken from the different angles of the body the upper six images are taken as the anterior angle of the body anterior body while the lower six are taken from the posterior angle posterior side of the body now coming on the single photon electro uh, single photon emission computer tomography that is called the s fact it is have the rotating gamma camera it has the rotating gamma camera in which the trans axial ect spect is the part of the trans axial ect while pet is the part of the longitudinal ect it allows the multiple views of the three dimensional distribution of the radioactivity from the different directions so i am asking one question if there is the one fixed object and the object uh, whose image we are going to take this is moving not the source is moving source is fixed and object is moving and in the second case the source is moving while object is fixed so in which case you are going to clarify more of the image of course where the source is moving as comparison to the source is moving not the object object get fixed so this is the benefit that i already discussed that mri have the three uh, source is moving and the object is fixed so th this uh, also is one part of the half part of the mri and half part of the ct scan we are using the source to move source is moving look this is the gamma camera and it provide the radiations it goes in the three dimensions from the different directions the gamma camera is coupled to the parallel line parallel to the whole collie motor uh, which allow to the produce a 2d image constituting of the profiles each profile represent the id projection of the radioactivity in the profile so what happens in the transaxial section actually this gamma camera uh, taking the moving in the three 3d directions in the whole 360 degree and taking the uh, this collie motor because collie motor is also moving in the same direction Uh, as the source is moving so collie motor uh, is parallel to the radiation is coming so that led to the made the focused image in the 2d direction so the image is focused as well as the resolution of the image is same so that is as uh, giving the about the 64 profiles of the image now there after each point in the profile represent the sum of the activity along with the side so there is the this is the intensity and this is the radiation and the size the detector and efficiency and home is the solid angle home is the solid angle that is represented here camera rotates either continuously or in a fixed angle steps and repeat the monitoring until the completion of the 360 degree turn and how the camera rotates that is the gamma camera gamma camera rotates continuously whether it is moving continuously non stop or we have to set the Uh, speed of that gamma camera by for actually like the 10 degree move in the uh, that 10 seconds or 20 degree in the 10 seconds like that we are getting fix the movement of the gamma camera with the time the three dimensional image is constructed by using the similar fourier analysis technique as designed by the x ray ct scanning so there is the three dimensional image it may be taken place by this technique the positron imaging tomography now coming on the after the spect we are coming on the positron imaging tomography it operates by using at least two opposite to each other positioned rotatable detector it have the actually two rotatable detector and they are positions opposite to each other they are positioned opposite to each other and object is between these two detector object is between these two detector pet is based on the principle of the detecting annihilation radiation with the coincidence technique so what it uh, does it uh, actually it is giving the positron a positron is two type that is the b positive beta positive or the beta negative positron when positron is bombarded with the electrons then it emitted the gamma rays it emitted the gamma rays and also if a b positive b negative positron emit, uh, is penetrated or the bombarded by the electron then it releases the neutrons but here we are using the 
positron positive type of positron that is beta positive and it produces the gamma rays and this energy is approx 511 electron uh, kilo electron volt 511 kilo electron volt now how it is performed so the injected radionucleotide must be positron that is beta positron emitter the positron annihilates after about 1 millimeter path length depending on the density of the tissue material and on the energy of the positron and emit to 511 kilo electron photons in the opposite directions so what it does actually you all know the characteristics of the photons photon is the massless particle you all studied in the 12th class photoelectric effect photon is the massless particle and it does have mass when it is moving in the rest rest mass of the photon is zero when it is moving it have, does have the mass and it have the same all the activities is same as the light it is the light particle and it also shows the quantum state of the light means particle state of the light not the wave nature it shows the particle like nature of the light so it emitted the two photons when the positron is bombarded with the electrons it emitted the two photons whose energy is 511 kilo electron volt but they both are moving in the opposite direction and get hit to the object get hit to the object from the object when we are for suppose we are inserting the any radioactive positron annihilator that release the radionucleotide that release the positron they are moving in the opposite direction and there are the two detectors that we are put in the opposite of these two objects so these two detectors they are moving continuously around the body they are moving continuously around the body but in such a way that they are always present to 180 degree to the object they are always present 180 degree or opposite side to the object so this photon get uh, detected by these two detectors the detection of both photons and the coincidence defined a line along with the annihilation event has taken place the position of the radionucleotide is about one millimeter distance but this one millimeter distance is not fixed because it also depends on the tissue strength and tissue thickening the distance as well as the slight division from the 180 degree emission of the two photons limit the spatial resolution to one millimeter to two millimeter that means uh, we put the detector in the 180 degree but if there is any deviation from the 180 degree there is the deviation in the angle between these two detector more than 180 uh, less than 180 degree that gives the resolution of one millimeter to two millimeter so what are the isotopes that we are using to emit the photons uh, these isotopes we are going to use that is the carbon that is 11 carbon and uh, fluorine 18 the isotope fluorine of 18 and the gallium that have the 68 isotope gallium 68 so end point energy what are the end point of energy means after emitting the photons the end point energy left that is written as the mega electron volt and the what is the range the range is in the millimeter and this range is more for the gallium and also the energy is more for the gallium because as energy is high the range is also high if we talk about the resolution resolution is also uh, in the case of the gallium is high as compared to others so for the ideal detector 50 centimeter apart so how much the detector are put uh, out apart from the object in the ideal case we are putting the detector 50 meter apart uh, 50 centimeter apart means both detector are present uh, with body about one meter distance right so but uh, if uh, this distance may be changed it is not fixed i'm saying about the ideal cases this detector may be changed by the uh, tissue strength and the tissue thickening the use of the annihilation radiation coincidence technique in the pet improve the quality of image the annihilation radiation coincidence technique that in what uh, the advantage of the annihilation radiation coincidence it improves the quality of image compared to the collie motor technique used in the aspect this annihilation radiation technique PET is more prominent and more useful as comparison to, to the aspect 
that is single photon electron emission tomography so here we are using the two photons right in the opposite direction they are moving and also we have the two detector while in respect we have only one detector and only one photon is going so that's why the pet is more useful in the respect the intensity and resolution of the gamma signal decreases with the increasing depth as because it is only one photon and also there is the resolution and the intensity of that light in this decreases continuously as the depth is increasing attenuation through the body decreases the increasing thickness of the d this is the formula uh, intensity of the gamma rays is uh, directly proportional to the thickening that is the fixed thickening and due to the degradation of the quali motor resolution quali motor resolution increasing source of the quali motor distance so this distance is equal to the d is the distance and the fixed length length of the quali motor to the diameter so diameter is multiplied by the length plus the constant uh, source of the quali motor distance z we are going to add the length to the quali motor system plus source of quali motor distance z and divided by the again the quali motor system distance now in the annihilation technique we are this is the technique of the single photon you can differentiate between the single photon difference and the depth in the object this is the objects that have the depth so you can understand there is a scintillator there is the quali motor and field of view single photon is moving single photon have the highest intensity first then the intensity continuously decreasing 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 and vanished now depth in the object object depth is continuously increasing 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 so that means when the rtc object uh, depth is increasing then it the single photon is not able to penetrate sometimes right because of the uniformity of the geometric response defined by the straight line between the two detection process so single photon is not able to penetrate so if uh, someone ask uh, about the spectra technology you have to draw this diagram this is a single photon and this is the depth in the object and this is the scintillator and quali motor and the field of view now after this the incidence of the coincidence signal is defined by the attenuation in the body material and from the point of annihilation and depth d in the both direction but in the pt case we have the depth in the two different directions in the opposite direction of the object because the detector is also present in the opposite direction and to both the two photons are moving in the opposite direction the thickness of the body along with the line that is x dx the integration form and you don't remember you don't want to remember this so it is not useful as you just have to remember this i true plus i random the intensity absolute count rate for the coincidence event is determined by the count rate for the two coincidences that is the real coincidence to find out the real coincidence that is i coincidence that is equal to the one single annihilation process and two random coincidences process so take coincidence event which occur even accidentally each detector record an uncorrelated signal within a time window so i true plus i random is equal to the i coincidence so the real coincidence is equal to the true coincidence plus random coincidence so total coincidence that is i true and i random the total efficiency for the considering measurement the efficiency of the considering measurement is equal to the one first detector and second detector is equal to 0.14 or you can also by seeing that the count rate for the true coincidences from the i node is determined by the efficiency of the e and solid angle this is the solid angle uh, that is here equal to the 0.14 the random coincidence count rate is equal to the single event so i1 is equal to i node for the one home and i2 for the i true upon i node that is one upon i node into home the independent efficiency now independent efficiency and solid angle but only depend on the intensity of the emitted annihilation radiation and co coincidence with the time window and time window what is the time lag time window is the time lag between the uh, efficiency and the solid angle so that is the 10 to power minus 6 of the second 10 to power minus 6 seconds and these conditions the intensity of the radiation source inside the body is i node is equal to 10 to power 6 events means it lag the 
10 to power minus 6 second and 10 to power 6 events occur in that random unity. So this is the random count rate that is the neglecting attenuation effect. So i random is equal to the 2 into 10 to power 4 events. The random if you uh, talk about the ideal sources then the random events that is the coincidence of the random event is equal to 2 into 10 to power 4 events per second and the true count rate is about 2 to 2 into 10 to power 4 per second so i1 is equal to i2 i1 and i2 both are equal so we have uh, taken the average of both of that so that is equal to about 1.4 into 10 to power 4 1.4 into 10 to power 4 that is the average event rates that are taking place now to improve the detector conditions to improve the detector conditions and how this is working to improve the detection condition and to separate the tissue from the random coincidence time structure of the signal can be utilized by the decreasing the home so there is the two detector see this is the two detector this is the source where the these two photons are producing now these two source then the, there are the amplifier the these amplifier are two types now further then there is the main amplifier and there is the fast amplifier fast amplifier gives the radiation to the fast disclaimer and then the fast disclaimer both are giving the same radiation and this main amplifier giving the energy spectrum that is not involved in the main courses that is involved in the energy spectrum and this energy spectrum goes into the computer that are recording that goes main amplifier is goes in the computer directly while fast amplifier goes in the body directly and both are getting involved in the ten time spectrum time spectrum is about 10 to power 